Chapter 3, in which Nadia and I create an enchanted secret garden. In my early years, I was enamored by the idea of secret and magical spaces. And so my imagination flourished after reading of the garden found by Mary in Frances Hodgson Burnett's Secret Garden, and I too dreamed ever after of finding my own. After more than 25 years of not stumbling upon a hidden key or doorway leading to a dormant garden, just waiting to be brought back to life, I decided to take matters into my own hands and began transforming a neglected and wasted space behind our old RV earlier this spring with Nadia. This space has been covered in weeds and debris for years and is very small, but small spaces are best when filled with fairies and gnomes who like to play with little children that may find their way here. Behind this space, we have a separate area for Luna. It is covered in grapevines that have yet to leaf out for the year. We used to have chickens in this space, but now that we have a dog, we need a safe space for her to be outside, as we live along a very busy road. We added a zip line with a toy that she loves to play tug of war with. This messy area is not the focus of the project, however, so let's get to work on transforming the weed patch to a beautiful space that we can enjoy as it fills in and matures over the years. Nadia took on the task of starting the weed removal. In one afternoon, she managed to remove almost all. We decided to add a pathway leading from our stairs back to Luna's area. We have a pile of old bricks that we've uncovered and we moved them back here to see if we had enough to make a pathway and it looks like we do. Nadia was so excited to start planting before we even finished prepping so she planted some fuchsia and some scotch moss. And on the side you can see that she's planted a Jacob's Ladder. This is going to be mostly her space to care for, so I let her choose all the plants that she wanted. There's still some weeding to do, but we've done some more leveling on our pathway and lined up the bricks. We set them on edge to create a slightly taller barrier for the pathway gravel that we will be adding. Our goal is to use as many reclaimed items as we can in this space. So, our bricks are reclaimed. And then we will lay down some pea gravel in the pathway that we are moving from the front of our yard to back here. You can see that the grapevines are starting to leaf out and Luna is back in her favorite spot. Now we've added some compost and some different amendments to our soil to help it to retain moisture better and just to have more success when we start planting. Once again, we are using more reclaimed items here, as you can see with the stepping stones that we have down the center of the pathway. We found enough in our yard to stretch all along from the steps to Luna's area and we've laid down mulch and Nadia has started planting already. We've also added a water spigot in a very conspicuous place but this is a garden and gardens need water. And last but not least we have this beautiful Japanese maple that we've tucked into the corner it's a very small variety and we will keep it nice and pruned, but we've also saved a spot for a bench of Nadia's dreams that she will be assembling later. So now let's take a look at all the work that we've done over the last few weeks, especially since the fairies are beginning to arrive.
Now that we are nearing the end of this chapter, Nadia and I invite you to create your own secret garden, no matter how small or large, and sprinkle it with magic to make it enchanted. Join us again for updates of how our garden develops. See you soon 